Hello everyone. In the past when I wanted to play PC games, I often felt that I have to have the newest and most powerful GPU. But GPUs got very powerful in the recent years and also expensive. Recently I wanted to play a little Fortnite, again on PC. And according to independent hardware testers, the most powerful GPU in early 2023 is NVIDIA's RTX 4019. In the past, new GPU generation provided a discount on the price per FPS. But with NVIDIA's release of, uh, with, with NV release of NVIDIA's 40 series GPUs, this seems not to be true anymore. Instead, every additional FPS costs more or less the same amount. So, to be honest, I don't really like that. So why not simply try a cheaper GPU? In this video, I will present you five reasons why gamers don't need to buy the latest and greatest and most powerful GPUs, and why cheaper and older GPUs can be viable choices as well. To drive this point home, in the next video, I will try out uh, to use my NVIDIA GTX 660M GPU, which is built in in a 10-year-old ASUS ROG uh, G55VW gaming laptop uh, to run Fortnite. The GTX 660M is more or less on the opposite end of the hard, uh, performance spectrum for GPUs uh, compared to the RTX 4090. So let's dive into reason number one, which is the installed hardware base of gaming GPUs in the field. So let's assume that games sell best if there are players players having sufficient hardware to actually run them. So the question becomes, what GPUs are currently in the field? Steam publishes monthly their famous hardware survey. It shows among other informations which video cards are how popular with Steam users. Here we see that as of December 2022, 75% of the video cards are made by Nvidia and that the most popular graphics cards uh, the most popular graphics card is NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1650. When we go more into detail, we see that of the top 10 video cards, 9 are NVIDIA's uh, 50 or 60 GPUs and only one 70 card, which is the 3070. The first 80 card is on rank 14. So, to understand which classes of video cards account for which part of the whole, I did with this data some light data analytics. I put everything in a spreadsheet and then uh, I classified each card as entry, mid-range, performance, high-end, enthusiast, mobile or iGPU. The results look as follows. Here we see that the enthusiast class which mostly consists of NVIDIA's 80 or 90 cards, only makes up close to 6% 6, 6 of all GPUs. The high-end class, which mostly consists of, of NVIDIA's 60 Ti and 70 cards, makes up for almost 14%. The biggest share are performance cards, which are mostly NVIDIA's 60 cards, with around 30%. And mid-range cards, which are mostly NVIDIA's 50 cards, make around uh, are around 70% of the whole. Now let's look at NVIDIA cards exclusively. And here we see that 71% of the cards fall into the 50 to 60 Ti bracket. Only around 9% are 80 and 90 cards and around 16% are 70 to 70 Ti cards. Of course, we could debate if the 60 Ti uh, belongs into the 70 to 70 Ti bracket. Looking at the generations of NVIDIA cards, we see that only around one third of all video cards are from the last generation, which are 30 series cards, because right now the 40 series cards are the current gen. So the last gen are 30, uh, 30 series video cards, and that uh, around two thirds are even older graphics cards from the even previous. Uh, even older generations, meaning that two-thirds of the cards are older than two years. This chart 
is a uh, strong indication that there is a wide range of young and old cheap and expensive GPUs in the field. So I don't have to feel bad and also you don't have to feel bad for not having the newest GPU. These are facts which every game development studio and game developer needs to take into account when designing games. The second reason for not buying the newest GPUs is the price to performance ratio. For that, let's look at Tech Power Up. They provide a GPU database. So in here, let's look for the 4090. And here we see its uh, general features. We see a couple of pictures, recommended gaming resolutions, and a statement on theoretical performance. We also see our relative performance bar chart, uh, where the um, selected graphics card is, is always set to 100%. So when we, for example, search for the 3060 Ti, we see that it has 37% of the performance of the 4090. We click on the 3060. We see its uh, general features, uh, pictures, gaming resolutions, also the theoretical performance. And now this relative performance bar chart is adjusted to 100% for the 3060 Ti. And uh, then we see it the other way around, where, where we see that the 4090 is 2.69 times uh, has 2.69 times the performance of the 3060 Ti. But now let's have a look at, at the performance per dollar. For that, let's go into the reviews and uh, look for the base data of this performance comparison. So let's go to the reviews, filter for graphics cards, Nvidia, and then we find the 4090 Founders Edition. Let's go to the average FPS section. The average will be calculated for from 25 games listed in this bar chart. Uh, the section also shows a ranking based on the average FPS for the 4090, for uh, 1080p, 1440p, and also for 4K. So I'm using big screens, so I'm always interested in 1440p and 4Ks, uh, 4K uh, FPS. So we see, for example, that at 4K, the 4080 has 100, makes uh, around 153 FPS, and the 3060 uh, is capable of uh, creating 54, almost 55 FPS. At 1440p, we see that the RTX 4090 is capable of 200 FPS on average, and the 3090 uh, uh, is capable of uh, creating 92 FPS. On the next page, we will see our relative performance. Here we see bar charts, which are set to 100% for the selected GPU, which is here the 4090. In 4K, we see, for example, that the 3060 Ti is, uh, has a 36 of the performance of the uh, 4090 based on the FPS we just saw. And on 1440p, we see that the 3060 Ti is capable of 48% of the performance of the 4090. So we see that at lower resolutions, the older graphics cards have a, a slightly better relative performance. Let's go now to the next section, which is performance per dollar. So keep in mind that this review is from October the 11th. So uh, therefore the dollar amounts may not be up to date anymore. Uh, here we see, for example, the 4090 for 4K, uh, the 4090 uh, at 1,600 US dollars set to 100%. So this means that if you could, would uh, buy the 4090 at 
$400, you would gain 14% uh, higher performance per dollar. The 3060 Ti at $450 US dollars uh, would be 28% higher performance per dollar than the 1490. But 4K is expensive. Uh, we already saw a better relative performance at 1440p, so let's go uh, to 1440p. And there we see that the 3060 Ti has even a higher uh, relative performance, which is 71% higher than the uh, 1490. Keep in mind that uh, here it's unclear if these numbers are with or without ray tracing and DLSS, but as there is another page with ray tracing and DLSS, I imagine that these results are without ray tracing and DLSS. So this means that the 40 series cards seem to have a worse price to performance ratio than the previous generation. So the third reason for not buying the latest and most powerful GPUs is NVIDIA's announcement at the CES 2023 uh, last week uh, in, in, uh, at, in last week. Uh, NVIDIA's announcement, uh, there you can hear it here from NVIDIA's Jeff Fisher directly. So let's... Uh, look into that. The RTX 30 series continues to be the best GPU for mainstream gamers, starting at just 329. So, I mean, think about what you just heard. Even Nvidia says <laughs> that its two-year-old gaming GPU is the best GPU for gaming, for mainstream gaming. I mean, okay, NVIDIA, <laughs> when you say so. <laughs> um, okay, so reason number four uh, is the presence of graphic settings in PC games. Game development studios uh, need to take into account that gamers can own graphics cards from the whole uh, hardware performance spectrum. Therefore, I find it somewhat foolish to aim for maxing out settings at highest, uh, for maxing out settings as high settings often consume vast amounts of compute power. And uh, some of them probably don't add that much to the experience. So to drive this point home, I decided to create another video exclusively on that topic. There I will try to use my NVIDIA GTX 660 GPU, which is built in in a 10 year old Asus ROG G55 VW gaming laptop to run Fortnite. And the reason for that it is that the GTX 660 M is more or less on the opposite end of the performance spectrum compared to the RTX 1490. So let's go to Um, uh, to reason number five, which is the entertainment value. So what's the goal of playing a game? If I, if I play a game, then my intent is to be entertained. Sure, sometimes you want to see something beautiful, but often times a huge part of the experience is independent of the hardware, at least when the minimum hardware requirements are met. So this is the IGN uh, top 100 video games of all time. And guess what's first place? So I re already gave it away. <laughs> but uh, here you see it, it's uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild. So fun fact, Breath of the Wild runs uh, on a Nintendo Switch and there it runs with a screen resolutions of uh, resolution of 900p at uh, 30 FPS. And second fun fact, uh, uh, even Fortnite, which is the 79th place in this list, uh, runs on the Switch as well, and also with 30 FPS. And just for kicks, <laughs> uh, 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 Tech Power Up's uh, GPU database even has an entry for the Nintendo Switch GPU, uh, which is uh, based on the Maxwell architecture, and it doesn't 
uh, even have one teraflop of compute power. It says 786 gigaflops, not teraflops, gigaflops. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, he here you have it. Uh, th th this is uh, th the fifth reason uh, why, in my opinion, content is more relevant than the hardware. So, in conclusion, we now know five reasons why you don't need to buy the latest and greatest and most powerful GPUs. Uh, number one, we saw that most players don't use the newest or mo most powerful GPUs as well, and therefore we can assume that developers need to account for this somehow. Uh, number two, we saw that 4K gaming is more expensive than 1440p gaming, and that uh, lower tier graphics cards offer better up a better performance per dollar. Uh, number three is that even NVIDIA says it. <laughs> uh, number four, PC games have uh, graphic settings to enable players with lower spec hardware to play the games as well. And number five, entertainment value is always, uh, is often dependent of the hardware. So don't feel bad if you don't own, don't can't or don't want to possess the latest and most powerful GPU. Instead, use the graphics settings, uh, lower it a little, have fun and save yourself a couple of bucks while you're at it. I am the Tech Wombat and this was the Wisdom of Wombats. Thanks for watching, take care and goodbye.